Hello everyone, thank you for joining us for today's webinar about the TC31A truck warning system. For those of you who are not familiar with Stints and ITS, our head office is in Concord, Ontario, and we have offices in Quebec, Alberta, and British Columbia. Stints and ITS was launched five years ago as a division of Stints and Alalite, and our main focus is on intelligent transportation systems. In January of this year, Stints and ITS Inc. has now become its own company. We continue to grow and add personnel, new technicians and salespeople across the country. We will be presenting for about 20 or 25 minutes and then we'll allow time for questions closer to the end. So my name is Sherry Rowell. I'm based in Calgary. I work with customers across Western Canada. I've been with Stinson for three years this month and have been in the traffic industry for 10 years now. AJ Koshik is our Director of Technical Sales. He's based out of the Ontario office and has been working with Stinson for coming up to two years now. AJ has 17 years experience in software and technical sales. We, have, we will be covering some statistics around truck-related accidents, the TC31A system and its use in Ontario, the different variations and configurations of the system, and we will also describe the system components. There's going to be a quiz at the end and we'll have a couple of gift sets that we will send out to the winners. AJ is now going to share some interesting statistics about trucks and safety. Thank you, Sherry. I would like to start with the statistics for injuries and fatalities due to collisions in which trucks are involved. There are approximately 3.1% trucks in Canada. And if you look carefully at this gray line on the graph of uh, towards the left, these 3.1% trucks are involved in about 4% in injuries. You know, somewhere here, which I guess is still not too bad until you start looking deeper into the numbers. And uh, you see that in 2017, there were about, uh, you know, look at this here, there were about 6,684 injuries in 2017 because of trucks. Mm -hmm. uh, that's an average of about 18 truck accidents or collisions every day, you know, or 18 injuries due to truck collisions every day. Now let's look at the graph on the right hand side and you see that these 3.1% trucks are involved in almost 7% fatalities in the last 20 years. Just in 2017, 140 out of the 1,850 fatalities happened because of trucks, buses, or construction vehicles. Uh, if you look at the bigger picture, and this is the statistics uh, which kind of uh, uh, you know compelled us to come up with this uh, separate webinar, uh, there's usually a 1% chance of a collision being fatal. However, whenever a truck is involved in the collision, the fatality rate increases to increases by double to 2%. Uh, in the traffic world where we keep talking about vision zero every day, that is 2% too high. Um, I'm gonna now pass it over back to Sherry to talk about different truck warning signs in Canada. Thanks, AJ. As you can see from this slide, truck warning signs vary across the country. The Ontario Traffic Manual Book 7 describes how a TC31A should work. Where the presence of a truck that is about to enter the road is automatically detected, the TC31A sign may be used with two amber flashers, one on each side of the sign alternating in a side-to-side -side manner activated by the detector so that the amber, amber flashers provide a positive signal to motorists that a truck is about to enter the road. This is in the manual, but there is nothing mandating the use of this safety system. Across Canada, the provinces are recognizing that motorists need to be aware when trucks may be entering or exiting. By detecting trucks and reinforcing the static signs with flashing beacons, the motorists will be warned and will be more cautious. There is a range of locations where it makes sense to warn motorists of large vehicles entering or exiting. We need to keep in mind that trucks have a wider turning radius, they take longer to come up to posted speed limits, and they also take longer to stop as well. As AJ indicated in the earlier slide, trucks are responsible for around 11% of injuries and fatalities in accidents in Canada. 
To reinforce AJ's point, nearly 150 Canadians are killed each year and another 7,000 seriously injured in collisions involving a heavy truck. Trucks are defined as having a gross vehicle weight greater than 12,000 pounds. Canada's road network spans on nearly 900,000 kilometers, and it is estimated that 90% of all consumer products and perishables are being shipped by truck. It is projected that 1.2 million trucks are on our roads today. So as you can see, highways, building construction sites, mining sites, truck terminals and distribution centers, and logging sites are some of the key locations where this system can increase safety for both the motorist and the trucks. I'll turn it over to AJ to illustrate how the TC31A system works. Thank you, Terry. Uh, the TC31A uh, truck warning system is a very, very simple system. Uh, and the, there are multiple configurations. I'm gonna talk about them now. Uh, in this particular page, you can see that there's a major roadway which uh, has a median on it. So the truck coming from this minor road can only go right from here. And so this is the simplest type of system where we have one detector station. The detector station usually has a sensor, uh, a microwave sensor or a camera-based sensor, which detects uh, incoming trucks which will merge onto the major roadway and sends uh, a signal, uh, usually using a radio uh, signal to the flashing station, which is here. Uh, and the, the flashing station starts flashing these uh, amber LED signs, LEDs, um, where, um, and, and it flashes it alternatively, as uh, mentioned by Shelley, as per the Ontario Traffic Manual, book seven. Uh, so that's the basic concept. Detect the truck and warn the uh, motorist on the major road using two of these uh, you know, uh, LED flashes. Uh, what really matters is the road geometry here and the, uh, the posted speed on both of these roads. So the distance at which uh, the uh, detection station would be uh, placed uh, would be decided by the posted speed on the smaller road or on the minor road and the distance at which the flashing station needs to be installed from the intersection uh, depends on the uh, posted speed uh, on the major road. Uh, so, you know, this is a very basic system detected here and flash the lights here. Uh, if I look at the second type of configuration, let's say on the major road, but there's no center median. That means the truck can now take a right turn here, and also may take a left turn here. And this, in these kind of scenarios, you need one detection station and probably two flashing stations, as you can see on the diagram here, uh, for you know, uh, road users in different directions, you know, who are traveling in different directions. Again, the road geometry has a major role to play in terms of the location of the detector station and the locations of the flashing stations, uh, especially the distance at which they are located. Uh, the radio equipment needs a little bit of an upgrade so that uh, the radio can communicate with two flashing stations instead of just one. Uh, you can also note that uh, we have solar uh, panels here. So uh, usually these are solar powered. There's also uh, battery backup in the cabinets that you see here. Um, so these can operate autonomously uh, in the field. Uh, there are different options available for the structure. I'm going to talk about it in the last slide, but that's that's the second variant of TC31A, one detector and two flashing stations. Uh, there could be a third major variant, which is uh, where let's say you have a minor road from two directions, where trucks are going to merge on a major road and they can turn in any direction. This is where you would need two detector stations the minor road and you need two flashing stations at the major road. Uh, again, road geometry and speeds matter. Uh, it could also happen that you may, you know, depending on the situation, it may happen that the trucks are turning in from the major road onto the minor road. And that's when you would probably need the uh, detectors on the major road and these flashing stations on the minor road. Again, you know, it's, it's all about specific application, uh, the road geometry, and uh, we can come up with a good solution for that. Uh, I'm 
going to now pass it on to Sherry, who's going to talk about a very special site that we have recently installed a uh, TC31A system on. So at this site, there's a building under construction. So we have construction vehicles moving in and out of the site. There's also a warehouse with truck traffic throughout the day adjacent to the site. Sometimes the trucks wait for deliveries at this spot, making it difficult to see oncoming truck truck traffic for the vehicles coming out of the construction site. The construction superintendent was aware of this issue and decided to be proactive and install a truck warning system here for the traffic coming out of his site. Again, the road geometry is an important part of the design as well as the placement of the sensors and the flashing stations. We installed the detector station at this location so that it can see truck traffic coming out of the adjacent warehouse. The flashing stations are installed and placed at an angle so that they will be visible to all coming, all traffic coming out of the construction site with ample time to react. This superintendent definitely has safety first on his mind. We have a short video of the installation of the TC31A at this site. You might be surprised at how large the system is when you see a person standing next to it. It does take almost a whole day for a crew of four to assemble and install the systems in this place. I'm sorry, I couldn't share the volume of this video. It's pretty nice music, but uh, you know, <laughs> it's just gonna be silent for some time. AJ, do you have any comments you'd like to add to this video? Of course, I was one of the four guys who were present at the installation. Did you see me? Uh, <laughs> jokes apart, um, very honestly, uh, this is the site that you were talking about. There are trucks waiting here, if you can see that. There were more trucks waiting right after this truck, which are not visible in this uh, video from here. But that's the, uh, the detection station. That's the sensor which is looking at trucks coming from right from here. And this is the main other gate, you know, all of these trucks come from here and turn out from here, plus there are construction vehicles going out of here. And these are the two uh, flashing stations. This one is angled at a place so that vehicles coming from this side can look at this. And uh, this second uh, flashing station is looking that way so that vehicles coming from that side can look at, you know, this flashing station pretty well. These are pretty big uh, LEDs, uh, uh, beacons. They are almost visible from half a kilometer away. And you see how big the size is? Um, all my customers have been surprised by how big the size is because they are designed for the highways, for use on highways, okay? So, you know, uh, moving on from there, I'm gonna talk about one last special application. We designed the system for uh, a town uh, in Northern Ontario, which is very famous for its mining industry. Uh, this is a highway which goes from west to, uh, sorry, I think west is this way, west to east, um, and it has a mining site on this minor road here. This highway has a, a speed limit of 80 kilometers per hour, but if you really look at the 85th percentile, uh, it's very close to 100 kilometers per hour. So there are a lot of fast moving vehicles coming on this road, and some of these trucks which are pretty heavy after they come out of the mining site, they're kind of slow moving. So when a truck comes out of here, it stops here and it might turn right or it might turn left here. So there's, uh, there have been a lot of um, you know near misses that have been reported at this site. Thankfully, no collisions yet, uh, but there are trucks which are coming in from the east here, which will stop at the left turn lane here and then take a left turn. So the customer had a very specific requirement. They said, hey, we want to detect only trucks, no other vehicles, only trucks, uh, maybe buses, uh, but not small vehicles at this zone and in this zone. 
And if there's a truck detected there or a bus detected there, they want the warning signs to flash. Uh, okay, the warning signs were appropriately distanced at this location so that uh, they give ample time for road users so that uh, you know they can take some evasive action before uh, you know a truck comes in their way or something like that. They are alert about this. So the kind of system that we designed for this was very simple. You know, um, there was a Bosch camera uh, based uh, detection, which uh, again has uh, onboard analytics. You can uh, you can draw detection zones and uh, within the software so that it detects only trucks in those detection zones. And whenever it detects a truck in those detection zones, it is going to send a uh, a signal through this wireless uh, uh, you know radio here to both of these signs, and these signs will start flashing. Uh, it's not very evident from here, but the signs were about 340 meters away um, uh, from from the Bosch uh, camera. And that's why it gave ample time for the road users to uh, be alert about any possible trucks coming in the way. AJ, it looks like there were street lights at this location. Were we able to take advantage of these poles and the access to power for this system? Uh, uh, Shirley, that's a very, very good question. Um, in fact, uh, the customer did not want us to put a new pole in there because there were existing uh, streetlight poles and he was also uh, very happy to provide AC power for the system through the uh, streetlight poles. We could have provided a solar option here, but uh, you know, AC, uh, if AC power is provided, then it has very low maintenance as well in the long run. So yeah, it, uh, there were options, but uh, the customer asked for this. And yeah, thank you. That That's something that I missed, but it's a very important aspect as well. Plus, if you really look at this uh, from a Bosch camera point of view, it needed to be installed at a certain height so that uh, the, wish, the view of these detection zones is not uh, obstructed by other vehicles traveling from here. So streetlight poles were very well for us, you know, keep it at a very good height, uh, gives it a very good view of both these detection zones. Uh, it works very well. I'm going to now uh, talk about the system components in general for our, our truck uh, warning systems. Uh, of course, we just talked about power options. So solar option is available. Uh, we do the right uh, solar panel sizing plus the battery sizing based on the location, based on the amount of sunlight available, if there are any trees around there. So we do the right survey and provide the right options, the right solar design. Uh, it can work on AC, it can work on AC from state lights. Um, the sensing and the activation are the most important part of any warning system. Uh, in terms of sensing, uh, we usually provide options for radar or microwave and camera-based options, but there are options available. You know, We can uh, provide options for inductive loops or even push buttons. Uh, sometimes what happens is uh, in some of these warehouses, there are push buttons available for drivers. After the delivery, they have to push the button. There's going to be a little bit of a delay, say give it a couple of minutes for the drivers to get into the uh, into the truck and move before they reach a point where they're probably a danger to other moving traffic. So uh, push buttons are an option as well. Uh, in terms of activation, in terms of the activation, we uh, provide beacons, uh, LED signs. Uh, these are flashing LEDs on signs, and they're almost visible for, from almost a mile away. And we also provide delayed activation, just in the example of push buttons that I just gave, uh, where, you know, uh, tri divers uh, might need some time to sit in their vehicles and get out of that place before the activation really happens. In terms of radio connectivity between the uh, detector station and the uh, flashing station, we usually use 900 megahertz radio transfer savers, which are approved for use in Canada without a license. Uh, we can also provide 2.4 gigahertz radio transfer savers if required by the customers. Uh, and in terms of structure, you saw the uh, the TC31A video. Uh, we have made the structure using telespars. Uh, we can also uh, you know, do temporary installations on root post. And if it's a permanent installation, especially if it's meant for install, uh, to be installed there for a few years, then street light poles and steel pole also works very well. So these are all the different options available here. I'm now gonna pass it over to Sherry 
So uh, now we're going to have our quiz. So please put your answer in the question feature. We have a Stinson gift pack to go out. What are TC31A systems presently used for? It's a trick question. <laughs> Sam, do we have any answers yet? Waiting for one more. Okay, so our two, we only had two people answer the question, so you're both winning. Congratulations. <laughs> um, Nick and Jason. Um, we will contact you afterwards via email to get your mailing addresses so we can send you the gift pack. And the answer is highway construction zones. So at this time, um, we will move on to questions. If you have any questions, please put them into the question feature and Sam will read them out for us. We have um, one question so far. Um, they want to know what the price point is. Do you want me to take that? Shari? I'll let you take that one, AJ. Okay, thanks. Uh, the price point uh, differs on which type of system do you want, but say a very simplistic system, uh, if you want to rent it out, would be about thousand um, dollars a month something like that but if you want to purchase the one detection uh, station and one flashing station it would be about twenty thousand dollars in that price range can we just purchase parts of this um, yes uh, we can design exactly what do you want out of this and uh, you know give you options about that it seems you're the distributor for this product. Who is the manufacturer of the system? Oh, this is an interesting one. We are not the distributors of this product. In fact, we manufacture it. Uh, we build it internally. Uh, the solar panels, uh, the whole solar system, even the flashing beacons, the flashing circuit, everything is built in-house at Simpson ITS. Sometimes, for some special applications, we uh, do use equipment from TAPCO, who's our partners, uh, uh, from the US um, and we have a couple of other partners as well from where we purchase sensors. And we also used a Bosch camera in that one solution as well. Yes, perfect, yeah. That looks like we've answered all of the questions so far. If, oh, oh someone's asking for us to follow up via email. Yes, we will follow up with everyone afterwards. Um, everyone tomorrow will receive a recording of the webinar. Um, and yeah. Okay. So we'd like to invite you to join us for our, our next presentation, which will be September 1st. Nick Schmidling from TAPCO and Olivia Haddon from Stinson ITS will be talking about the legend Viz illuminated signs, next level nighttime vis visibility that TAPCO has now developed. So once again, AJ and I would like to thank you for your time today. And if you have any specific applications that you would like to talk to us about, uh, possible sites, we'd be happy to speak with you about that. We will. Um, send out the slide deck via email to everyone who attended. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye.